Hey, what's up guys? It's Matt with The Movement System. Today we're going to be talking about mitochondrial density and what that means and the adaptations from training. Alright, so if we think about this muscle over here, we can think about a cross section of say a bicep muscle and this is someone who's untrained. We can see their muscle here is this blue circle and there's eight or so red dots in there. These are representing the mitochondria. Now, we can say that this this guy is going to do either resistance training or cardiovascular training. What is going to be the adaptation from each? So let's assume he's doing some cardiovascular training. He's going to go, you know, 5K training, do let's say six weeks, three or four times a week of running. At the end of that six weeks, this is what his muscle might look like. So this is these red dots are representing increased number and size of mitochondria. So in the same size muscle, we didn't have hypertrophy, no, no muscle growth, so the muscle stayed the same size because he's just running, and the mitochondria increased. So the mitochondrial density increased because there's more mitochondria and bigger mitochondria in the same size muscle. So this would be an increase in mitochondrial density. Now, if instead this guy would have just done purely resistance training, what would have happened is, again, six, eight weeks goes by, he's just lifting weights, you know, no running, just lifting weights, the muscle size is going to increase, so he's going to have some muscle hypertrophy, you know, type 2 muscle fibers, type 1 muscle fibers, they're all going to get a little bit bigger with the same amount of mitochondria. So there's the same amount and same size of mitochondria in a bigger muscle, therefore, the mitochondrial density decreased. So now... The reality is that there's going to be some combination usually in, in mixed type training where you're doing cardio and resistance training, but purely from a physiological standpoint, cardiovascular training leads to increased mitochondrial density, whereas resistance training leads to decreased mitochondrial density. All right, guys, so that's the main concept. If we want to go a little bit deeper into this, guys, there's other adaptations from cardiovascular training that are kind of related. So if we think about the mitochondria existing in your cells, and basically those mitochondria, within that mitochondria is where things like the Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation occur to produce ATP. Now, those cells, let's just say we're in an untrained state, we have 100. We know that in this trained state, we, we increase and we add more. It's obviously a lot more than 100. But just to, to represent, now we, after six weeks of training, have 120 mitochondria. Those mitochondria also are accompanied by more things like Myoglobin. Myoglobin is a protein that helps get oxygen from the red blood cell in the capillary and actually takes it to the mitochondria for those oxidative processes to occur. Um, so, so cardiovascular training increases mitochondria, but it also increases other factors, other enzymes as well that, that help with fat burning and other processes like that. Now from resistance training, we talked about hypertrophy. One of the main adaptations here is that type 1, type 2 muscle fiber hypertrophy. And again, that mitochondria stayed the same in this case. So that cardiovascular training could have come from zone 1 and zone 2 steady state training, maybe some interval training, some tempo work in zone 3, um, maybe some fartlek training. All of those training modalities would have led to these cardiovascular training adaptations. And then when we think about resistance training, again, the main adaptation there is muscle hypertrophy. So increase in muscle size with the remaining mitochondria staying the same. So that would result in an overall decrease in density. All right, guys, if this video is helpful for you, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe for more. If you want to see more in-depth videos and more free resources surrounding studying for strength and conditioning, go ahead and hit the link below to join our strength and conditioning study group. See you guys in the next one.